What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and today I'm going to talk about a very interesting read phenomenon databases called phantom reads. And this is uh, something a lot of people overlook and it can, if misused, lead to a disaster. So let's just explain what is that. Phantom read is one of the three phenomena, which is dirty reads, non-repeatable reads, and the phantom read happens in concurrent uh, concurrent transactions. So when another transaction does something and you're in another completely concurrent transaction running at the same time and you're seeing unpleasant results, let's put it this way. So phantom read ex explicitly is when another transaction inserts a new row and all of a sudden when you do a query in your own isolated transaction, you start seeing that row, despite you shouldn't really see that row. Like, let's give an example so this is all clear. So I'm here and this is the transaction number one, this is transaction number two. There, is no, uh, there are no any transactions yet, it's just terminals. But if I do select star from sales, I have a sales table here. You can see that I have five records here, right? This is the dates and all that stuff, right? So now if I do a begin transaction here, I start a transaction and I do a select star from sales, you can see that I see these five sales report. And I'm about, let's say I start the transaction to, to produce a report about the, the, all the sales that I made between these dates. And uh, let's say I want to do the sum, right? Let's just do, okay, uh, select PID, sum of the price uh, from sales. Um, and let's do a group by, you have to do a group by PID. And all of a sudden you have product number one sold $40, right? So now if I go, I am still on a transaction. I go into a completely different transaction and I'm gonna insert a new sale. Someone just made a sale and it happened to be between these dates, right? Um, uh, say PID, price, date, uh, values, enter, let's just say product number one, it made up, I don't know, $15 and it was made on February 7th, 2021, right? And now, I, did, I was in a transaction, so this automatically started transaction committed, right? Did the, did the statement and then committed immediately. Now, if I go back to my isolated transaction, so, so they say, right? And I do a query, all of a sudden, the sum has changed. Remember, you're producing a report, and a report has to be consistent based on the start of the transaction. So if people start making sales while you're producing a report, you're gonna get funky results. Like, let's say you produce, you're listing all the products and then you're doing a query to do the sum, you're gonna get an inconsistent result. Of course, you're gonna get an inconsistent result. Now, if I do select star from sales, and even if I do a range query, let's say between this and this, you're gonna get this extra row that has been inserted. This, most of the time, is undesirable. Right? So how do we fix this? Postgres provide us with ways to fix this, and most databases actually do, and that, it's called isolation loop, which I talked about in my introduction to database engineering course. So now the serialization isolation level allows us, allows the databases to serialize transactions so that nobody, if a transaction has dependency like this one, this has a dependency on this insert, it will affect it. If, if Postgres detects or MySQL or any databases that supports serialization detects that there is a dependency, it will try to isolate those changes. So let's, let's go ahead and, and be in a, let's do the same thing, but in, a, in an isolated, uh, uh, let's do a rollback first and then do uh, the, uh, the serialization. So if I do begin transaction, uh, isolation level serializable, and now I am in a transaction that is serializable. That means anything that I read must not depend on other transaction that is currently running. Otherwise, things can go bad. So if I do select star from sales, you can, do, you can see that I have six records. Let's go ahead and insert something in a completely different row here. Uh, let's insert the same thing, sure. Now if I go back and a query, you see that I've been isolated from that. It, 
Postgres detected that, hey, something happened on the other end, but don't worry, we have isolated you from that change, okay? So now you can safely commit your change and you're good, right? You can produce a report, you can, you can do the sum and you will be isolated. You will not see that change that happened on the, on the other transactions. So finally, this is all true in all databases except Postgres. Actually, Postgres is, is special when it comes to this. Postgres prevents phantom reads even in other isolation levels such as repeatable read isolation level. Right? So the repeatable read is allow you to query, execute the same query yet get the same result. Right? It's a little bit different than phantom read. Phantom read, all of a sudden you get a new row. Read is just you're reading a value and that value does not change no matter how, much, how many times you query it in the same query, in the same transaction. So now I, I began my beautiful transaction here, which is non-repeatable read. There are seven rows now. Why? Because now I started a new transaction. I picked up the latest changes. It, it's almost like it, it's, it is implemented as versioning because MVCC, multi-version concurrency control. So when you start a transaction, you create a version. That's a version of these rows. And then as you start editing other people committing, the database increases its version. So now, even in repeatable read, if you do this thing, that phantom thing, you don't see that phantom read. That even in a range queries, whether this is a, an unbounded query like what I'm doing right now, or if it's like you're doing between, hey, give me the sales report between this date and this date. That's also can be affected as a phantom read. But if you are on a repeatable read isolation level, you do not see that even in Postgres. That is very special only to Postgres. MySQL, if you do a repeatable read, you don't get rid of phantom reads. That's very, very critical. The only way to get rid of phantom reads in Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, as far as I know, you have to do serializable isolation level. Or you do some sort of a pessimistic locking, right? So it's like, hey, lock until someone, if someone is changing the stuff, uh, don't allow me to read it, right? That's another way. All right, guys, very quick video to talk about phantom reads. I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.